Hey everybody, welcome to Thursday Chat. Today's special guest is author Candace Sanderson. She's the author of two books, and I believe she's working on her third, as we are right now, right? The first book, The Reluctant Messenger, Tales from Beyond Belief, right there on her background. And um, then her second book, uh, The Reluctant Messenger Returns. And uh, I know you were here with us before, but some of these people have not heard you speak. So I'd love for you to kind of just talk about how you came from uh, living a quote, normal life as a school psychologist to having all of these super incredible experiences. And I have to say, I enjoyed your two books so much and as did so many other people, uh, as you can see by the great Amazon reviews that you have. Um, but I, after I got done reading that second book, I, I felt like the thing was, I'll have what she's having <laughs> because <laughs> she's leading this super, super incredible, interesting life. And um, I'm so happy that you're back with us. Welcome. Well, thank you so much. Um, you know, my life has been absolutely crazy. Um, and I thought what I would do is invite you all to come with me today let's go on a little journey and maybe you can get just a taste of what my life is about. Okay. But I need to warn you where we are going. Well, time doesn't exactly work the way that it does here. So what might be a minute or two here could be months or even years there. So we should prepare. Now we're online. So I know you're comfortable in your home settings. That's good. Me, I've got the essentials at my arm's reach. I've got water, I've got coffee, and somewhere here I have tissues. So I'm ready. Our destination, we are going to travel back in time. We're going to land in the month of May, but the year, the year is 2014. So everyone get comfortable. And let's just take a couple deep breaths and as I begin to count down from five, I invite you to close your eyes. If not, just watch me while my eyes are closed. Four, three, two, and one. Open your eyes. Breathe normally. We're here. We have arrived. I want you to look around. There's a dreamlike quality to our surroundings, but we are definitely not dreaming. Clouds of heavy mist swirl around our feet and we can't even see the ground. I look around and I'm surprised. I'm climbing. <laughs> I'm climbing a ladder, a ladder that reaches straight up into the sky. But this is no ordinary ladder. This is a ladder of enlightenment. And the rungs, the rungs are circles, huge metal rings. They're so large that I have to stand on my toes and stretch as high as far as I can just to reach the rung above me. I climb. I climb for what I think is a long time, but I can't tell. Maybe I've been climbing for weeks. It could be months or even years. I really don't know. But I realize I'm starting to see a pattern. It's so slight and so gradual that I almost don't realize it, but after moving through many, many rungs, I know it's not my imagination. The rings are starting to overlap. A couple things pop into my awareness. As these circles overlap, it's a little easier to climb. Well, of course, that makes sense. The circles are closer together, but it's more than that. You see, I've had practice. Now I know how to climb, so my climbing is more efficient. And because of this practice, I'm stronger. I've gained strength. And then I notice something really odd. 
the part that I grab, the circle that's directly above me, well, it, it looks, it looks like a smile. And with each circle that I travel upward, the smile gets larger. And that makes me smile. Now, let me show you this picture. This is a picture of me climbing that ladder of enlightenment. With each rung that I grab, that smile gets larger. Smile. Now, I don't know whether I think this looks like a smile or maybe someone gives me that thought because as soon as I realize it looks like a smile, I hear the word smile. Now, it's not something that I hear with my physical ears. It's more like telepathic. And I don't know whether this is a description or whether it's a command, but it's definitely the word smile. Smile. It's clear. It's precise. And as I hear that word, a smile crosses my face. My heart, my heart begins to warm. And I just feel this joy and this bliss. The smile seems to energize me. So I continue climbing even faster. I don't know where I'm climbing. I don't even know why I'm climbing. All I know is I have to climb. So I do. And here's why I get, here's why I bring the uh, tissues. Sometimes when I tell this story, it gets to me. But I start climbing, one rung at a time, one smile at a time. And then another telepathic message arrives. And it describes these rings. It says they're like stepping stones. And then they describe it as an upward energy that allows more bliss to occur. Well. You know, I can certainly relate to that. And then the message said that this upward energy is the, quote, functional mechanism of enlightenment. The message said, as you smile, you put forth the energy of goodness, which allows for more light to enter your realm of awareness. Hmm. You know, I think about this. The energy of goodness allowing for more light. I mean, I never thought of smiling as having an energy, but it makes sense, at least on some level. You know, you can fake a smile. You know, you may not be happy and you just make yourself smile. But then within moments or maybe minutes for some of us, it becomes genuine. Maybe. Maybe that is the energy of goodness growing from within. So I continue my upward track. I smile more and more with each rung that I grasp. Finally, I approach the top of the ladder. But how long has it taken? Years? Decades? Maybe, just maybe. I've been climbing my entire life. I know I've reached the top when those last two circles align perfectly with each other. They become one. And as those last two rings collapse into one, I too become one. I experience a sense of oneness of unity, of wholeness, completion. For the first time in my life, I am complete. Standing on this ladder of enlightenment, perfectly balanced and whole, without any hesitation or any thought whatsoever, I simply let go. I release and I drift. I drift from the ladder of enlightenment like an astronaut in deep space. Ultra slow motion, my body rotates head 
over heels, floating. I'm floating in an ocean of peace, of serenity, tranquility, an ocean of divine love. I am transformed. I look around and my body, it begins to disappear. I realize I can no longer tell where my body ends and where the deep blue of the cosmos begin. I disintegrate. Now, I want to get this next part right. So I'm going to read from the book, page 57. Good thing I have a book. Um, the me I had known disappeared. It was replaced with the self-identity of stillness and peace. And then it happened. The real me remained. My soul, my spirit, my essence. I became nothing and everything as I floated in this primordial sea of all that is. I continue to drift in this velvety void of quietude and I melted even further until I became the light. I became stillness and peace. Then within a profound silence, I drifted into an abyss and I sank deep into this unknown yet somehow familiar place. Within this muted void, this space that contained nothing and everything, a sound came forth and enveloped me. It was the deep echo of the word OM. And then another message. Yes, reaching enlightenment brings with it the energy associated with the chant of the holy word OM. Now, thank you for accompanying me on this journey. Now, let's unpack this experience. This, this is the journey that opened doors to something I wasn't prepared to understand when it happened in 2014. It's an event that over time, even today, I continue to gain insight about. I want to share with you some information I gained both through research and then through my favorite way, coincidence. Let's look at the word OM. Now, OM is used by many who practice yoga. Uh, not me. Now, one disadvantage or maybe advantage of connecting through an online platform is that you really can't see me. But if I were in front of you and you had a good look at this body, you'd soon realize, no, 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 she doesn't do yoga. My body would give that away, you know, pretty quickly. Uh, Om is also chanted by those who practice deep meditation. I didn't meditate. I mean, at least back then I didn't. Not when this happened in 2014. In fact, I don't think I'd ever spoken that word, much less chanted it. So I did a little research when writing the book and I found an article written by a woman named Rachel Zalea. And she said that the sound of Ohm is a vibration from which the entire universe comes. She said that form and creation come from vibration. Um, Zalea said that Ohm is the most elemental of all vibrations. And then she said, Ohm is the sound of the void. I'm thinking, the sound of the void? That gave me cold chills. Now, over the years, cold chills have been sort of a guidepost for me. When I have them, it tells me I'm on the right path. It's an indicator that something I've just heard or see is true. So when I get cold chills, I pay attention. Now, this wasn't the last set of cold chills I would have um, over the ladder of enlightenment. You may not know Dr. Raj Parti. He's a medical doctor who had a very extensive and profound NDE, near-death experience. And he wrote a book called Dying to Wake Up. In 2017, which is a year before I published The Reluctant Messenger, a friend sent me his book. 
when I read it, I saw all these common elements between his near-death experience and my adventure. He, during his MDE, archangels escorted him where? Wait for it. To the top of a ladder of enlightenment. I thought, a ladder of enlightenment? More cold chills just racked my body from the top of my head to the bottoms of my feet. It was so significant. He also said one of the archangels that escorted him said the top of the ladder is like, quote, everything and nothing. Exactly what I had experienced when I had said it contained nothing and everything. The next wave of chills came when Pardew saw a being of light at the top of the ladder. When I was climbing the ladder at the top, I actually became the light. I was a being of light. As he reached the being of light, he heard the distant chant of, guess what, Om. And as I dropped into that muted void, Om surrounded me. When Dr. Party reached the being of light, he said the chant of Om became more distinct and that it opened the doors for direct communication that he described as telepathic, just like mine. So by this time, I've had so many cold chills, I'm, I'm like frozen solid. But um, as the light faded, you know, it, it's not over yet because as the light faded, he said he experienced a cosmic void. And he described that void. He said it was like he was floating weightless like an astronaut in space. You know, once again, it was almost word for word how we how our experiences were the same. Um, at the, because I had not yet published, I was in the final stages of editing The Reluctant Messenger, I contacted Dr. Partee in California. I told him about my ladder of enlightenment experience, and he, he provided on the back of the book, in fact, both books, an endorsement for me, and I've, I've been so, so thankful. But, you know, reading his experience validated mine. But then that kind of begs the question, what was it? For him, it was a near-death experience. For me, you know where I was when this happened? Was I deep in meditation? No, I've already confessed I didn't meditate, at least back then. I certainly wasn't doing yoga. I was sitting at my dining room table, enjoying a cup of banyan and bean coffee. So the question is, what was this? And over the years, answers to that one question keep coming into me. And, and what I think might be an answer today might change next week. In fact, last weekend, I'd learned that there's a name for what I've experienced. It's called an STE, Spiritually Transformative Experience. Um, sometimes they call it steps for peak experiences. This is a term that was coined by a Canadian medical doctor, Yvonne Kaysen. It's an umbrella term that describes all sorts of types of spiritual awakenings. It includes expanded awareness, near-death experiences, shared death experiences, and then these other episodes that will leave the experience or feeling part of all that is, a sense of unity or these are the people that will have glimpses into states of perfection and joy and peace. So regardless of whether you call this an STE, a mystical experience, or tapping into cosmic consciousness, I need to tell you that there are many who can do this. There are many who are able to access these realms, reaching to the other side. They like straddle this world with one leg in the physical and the other leg or foot or maybe just toe in the world of the unseen spirit, the unseen world of spirit. And there will be more who'll be able to do this. Now, this was an experience I had in May of 2014. It was an event that accessed a non-physical realm, a realm where you can connect with angels and guides, a realm where you can connect with loved ones who have crossed over. 
in fact, last night, my um, sister-in-law contacted me because, or yesterday afternoon, because her, she had to put her dog down. All day long yesterday, that dog kept coming to me and coming to me with messages, and I could see where he was and what he was doing. But there are many of us who can tap into this realm of the non-physical, where wisdom and truth and knowledge are. Now, a place where we can begin to understand who I am, why I'm here, and all those philosophical questions that we've had before. What is the meaning of life? So I offered you this adventure with the Ladder of Enlightenment as an example of my, quote, ordinary life. But let's go back to the beginning. How did it start? Because it truly was an ordinary life. Average, but one day, everything changed. I transformed from psychologist to psychic, from skeptic to believer, in one day. Now, let me share my story. I've written two books, The Reluctant Messenger and The Reluctant Messenger Returns, An Unexpected Adventure into the Angelic Realm. But my first book, there's a subtitle, Tales from Beyond Belief. Well, why? Because the stories that I share in this book, like The Ladder of Enlightenment, sound like they're tales, like they're made up stories. And most of these tales are beyond the normal person's belief system. Now, I should know about what's normal because after all, I you know, was a psychologist and that is my training. What's normal, what's not normal. I knew that many of the stories I shared in the book were beyond my belief system back then, yet I was the one experiencing them. You know, I, I originally did not want to put this story in the book because it, it was just too woo-woo, too out there. But I felt like it would be disingenuous if, if I didn't. So I included it and just kind of cringed and thought, oh, well. And wouldn't you know, you know, a year later when I'm in the final stages, I get this beautiful validation. But let's talk about the stories. There's actually two stories of the beginning, the how and the why. We only have time for one story today, so I'm going to begin with the how. It's also an easier story to digest. It was August 28, 2013. I'm on my way to work early one morning before the sunrise, and out of the blue, a thought dropped into my awareness, and I immediately knew that this was not something that came from me, it was more like something that came for me. It was a message about a flower and how a flower is a flower. So they hyphenated the word, they, <laughs> flower, a flower of energy. And they said a plant draws energy from deep within Mother Earth. It ascends toward Father Sky. And when it's in perfect alignment with Source, it creates a flower. And, you know, it, there, there were more things, but then it, it ended with, let us all be flowers of energy. Well, I didn't know what to think of this. You know, I knew the words, the vocabulary, the phrasing, not mine. I didn't use terms like back then, like source, mother earth, father sky. So I didn't know what it was. What was this? My first thought, naturally, as a psychologist, was to look at the pathology. What's wrong with me? Have I gone crazy? Now, I mean, you know, I knew it wasn't true, but yet I couldn't explain what happened. So I dismissed it. Okay, it's one of those mystical things I've read about, you know, I had more important things to do, like getting to work an hour early. So a few minutes later, I pull into the empty parking lot at work. I grab my things to go in the building and I walk toward the side entrance and I stop dead in my tracks. Something distracted me. I mean, I still remember. It's like I turned almost in slow motion to the right and I found myself face to face 
with a tree. A tree. I'm looking at a royal poinciana tree. You know, I've passed this tree hundreds of times before, but something was different on this day. That tree called to me. It beckoned me. So I walked to it and I looked at it. It, you know, it's covered with these beautiful, vivid, red orange blossoms that look like orchids. It has these widely spreading branches that curved upward and it formed this stunning canopy. The sun was just starting to rise and like these beams of light just filtered in through the tree. And I looked on the ground and there were these absolutely mesmerizing patterns of shadow and light. I stood there and just gazed at the tree with wonder. Here I was alone with the tree, but I had the, the oddest yet inspiring thought. I wasn't alone. Here we go. This was not just a living tree, but a sentient being as much alive as I was. I stood there, time stopped, and I just soaked in the beauty of this tree. I mean, I don't even think I was breathing. Suddenly, my focus shifts to this tiny bud this flower that had not yet opened, and my thoughts returned to the last words I had just heard on my morning commute. Let us all be flowers of energy. And any doubt that I had about the message dissipated on some very deep yet undiscovered level. I knew that I had been guided to this tree to see this unopened bud. It represented me. It represents you. Potential. We are the flowers. We are the flowers of energy. Just waiting to bloom. You know, after a few moments, I went in the building, but I didn't know, you know, not knowing what had happened and not knowing how the message and the experience with the tree would change me, not knowing I had taken my first steps into the unseen world of spirit. I would never be the same. So thank you for accompanying me on this journey. Oh, I'm one minute fast, but. Uh... That's that's really um, such a story, Candace, and it's it's so touching and and so deep, and we can see how it so profoundly affected you and changed the trajectory of your life moving forward. And of course, we see re the results of that of everything that came after the books, the awards, the, the appearances, and, and you being such a great mentor and guide to others um, to be able to open up to that, that flow of energy. Um, so what we'll do now is open it up for um, questions for Candace. Does anybody have any questions right now? And while you're thinking of what you might want to ask, Candace, one of the things that was in your the second book where you talk about the angelic realm, something that really struck me is when you talked about um, it, it's a frequency. It, it's a yes. matter of frequency. And when we had Michelle Love talk to us about, um, you know, who are we communicating with? Is she, she described it like getting in an elevator and going up to different floors and different frequencies. Yes. And from what you described, it sounds like that angelic realm is at a very high frequency. Can, can yes. you just tell us a little bit about how you differentiate between sure. the three dimensions that you're communicating sure. with? Um, I have had 
you know, so many guides and angels and, and different entities that, that come and visit with me. I know a lot of people who channel might have a group or, or one certain person, but I'm just like all over the place. But I recognize who is coming to visit me by their vibrations. It's all a matter of energy. The more, and, and what, what the messengers have told me is that there's really nothing woo-woo about this. It's, it's all basic physics. It's learning to open your system up, learning to recognize the world, um, not solely through our five senses, but to expand our senses so that we can, we can smell thoughts or we can listen to colors so that we can blend all of our senses. But to, to be more specific with your question, Kelly, for example, typically when I connect with angels, the first thing that happens is, is and you all got a, a couple of examples of that earlier, is when I start connecting with that energy, it is so strong and so powerful and so loving. I just start crying, you know, because it's just, it, it just, you know, I just want to get on my knees and just like, oh, you know, it's just so beautiful. But usually what I see, because I can now see energy, with angels, I see these beautiful pastel ribbons of light pink and light green. And when they come in, I know, okay, the angels are here. Now, there are some other angels that will, will that give me some very specific things other than that, but it's all a matter of learning to open your awareness and accept the frequencies of these higher vibrational beings. Interesting that it's pink and green because those are also the colors associated with the heart chakras. Well, I, I knew I knew green was and pink is well, and you know what? And they keep telling me it's all about the heart. And the heart is the portal to the other side. We, you know, when we are first, um, up, upon conception, the first cells that form are the cells of the heart. And from the heart, then they go and differentiate. So if you look at the heart, it is the most intelligent organ of the body. The brain might be the organ of intelligence, but the most intelligent organ of the body is the heart. And that is what connects us to the other side. So yeah, that pink and green, that makes sense. Thank you for sharing that with me. Lucy, did you have a question? Sure. How would you describe your life before all of this? Oh, normal. You know, I mean, you know, what's normal? I mean, you know, I was, um, Living in Naples, Florida, I have two children. Um, my husband died several years before. I'm, you know, working, you know, 50, 60 hours a week. I'm just getting up, going to work, doing what I need to do, loving it, coming home. You know, I've always been fascinated with like ESP, things like that. My mother was really, I mean, I think she was psychic, but she would have dreams and she would tell me about them, and then they'd come true. But as far as me having any kind of skill set, no. I mean, I know a lot of people who, ha who are channels and they have these beautiful stories, you know, like when they're three years old, they were going out of body. It's like, no, I really didn't have anything until that, that day on my way to work. But what this tells me is if something like that can happen for someone like me, who's normal and who actually was a little skeptic about these things, because after all, I was trained as a psychologist to believe only what the five physical senses could measure. You know, if you couldn't taste it, smell it, you know, hear it, it didn't exist. And then all of a sudden to open up to this, and then I started getting all these messages that I could verify, I had to shift and my entire belief system just crumbled and I replaced it with something that was very different than, um, you know, it's almost like there's canvas 
2.0 that happened on that day in August 2013. I, I mean, I changed, I was different. And also, you didn't ask this, but I'll tell you, going back, I, I, I was initially trained as a clinical psychologist, and then I got dual certification also as a school psychologist. But I go back and look at when I used to have patients that I would treat, you know, I really did some of them a disservice. They were describing to me my world now, but I only saw it as pathology then. So I've had a totally different um, change in my life because my, my whole belief system is different. Debbie. I think I just love what your story is all about and how you were perfectly in the right place at the right time, all the information and everything that you got and then let us COVID. I mean, so people have to wait centuries or, you know, maybe incarnations, whatever, to get this information, but you got it in the right time and thankfully you were able to share with us. I just wondered if you could share maybe anything more, any more revelations or anything that you can about COVID because I think this is so yeah. cool. Well, you know, actually in, in my first book, you know, there's all these messages and some of them they were talking about life as you know it is going to change. And I'm thinking, yeah, 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 you know, 30 years from now, 100 years from now, it's going to change. And when COVID hit, I realized, in fact, the book was, the second book was ready, I was ready to publish it. I went back and looked again at these messages and I realized the messengers were talking about today, currently today. They have told me that COVID serves as a wake up call. This is part of Mother Earth. And yes, I call her Mother Earth these days, even Gaia, the spirit of Mother Earth. These are part of, she's going through a transformation. She is evolving to a higher vibrational frequency. And as Earth goes through this, we go with her. That's why when I said earlier, there's going to be more people like me, normal average people that all of a sudden wake up and realize they can connect to the other side. Because as this transition occurs into higher vibrational frequencies, the veils between the dimensions are thinning. So that's going to allow us to open up. But the messengers tell me that COVID, this is a time for introspection. This is a time where we can choose to look at life differently. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a beautiful time to take inventory. You know, what serves you? And, you know, if it doesn't serve you, maybe it's time to let it go and look at things differently. But this is something that we will get through and we're going to, you know, be able to part through some of those dark clouds that we might be seeing and we're going to be able to rise above and find ourselves in in higher vibrational frequencies we're going to see more people reaching a tipping point and coming along with us you know i know that sounds um like wishful thinking but it isn't you know, these are the messages that I'm that that I'm getting, and I I certainly certainly believe them. This is a, a this is an opportunity for us to learn. Can I ask basically like for the you know when you're supposed to wear the mask and social distancing, how much of that is appropriate? Because if you really believe that this is like a stepping stone, this is a good time, then you really don't should be believe that. But then you know it's like okay, I don't really want to die. It's not the bad right. thing. It's like, right. This is full time. So how do you balance both of those? Okay. Yeah, and balance balance is the key. You're absolutely right. Now you've got to remember my training is scientific. Mm -hmm. You know, as a psychologist, do you? see me walking outside without a mask? No. Yeah. I mean, I could, and I could get COVID and, and I could die. And, and, you know, I'm still, I'm, my true essence is still going to live, but you know, I want to stick around for my grandkids. So I do what I think is most appropriate to protect myself and to protect others. These days I wear a mask and I wouldn't not wear a mask because I think that's part of the balance of being responsible and being respectful of the science 
and also allowing my heart to guide me in what I need to do. And that's what my heart tells me. So I hope that makes sense. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Can't hear you, Kelly. We have time for uh, one more question, if anybody has one. Do you still practice as a psychologist today? Uh, good question. No, I retired two years ago. Um, I retired and then two weeks later, uh, it was in 2018, I published the book. So I went from psychologist to author in just a couple weeks. That's amazing. And it, well, if you think it's amazing, you should be on my end of it. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just to, to wrap up, Candace, if we could just, if um, you talked a lot about how we can open up and connect to these energies. Is there, and I know you've been sharing some, some quick things on YouTube, but if you had to say, you know, what, what's, what's a main thing that we could be doing to, to open ourselves? Uh, watch my YouTube because I, I, have, I have some exercises on how to do that, but everything is energy. Not only the physical items around us, but our emotions. And be aware of your heart space. Let your heart space guide you. If you think something, you know, if you're confronted with something and you don't know, you know, what should I do? Listen to your heart because your heart is the closest connection to the other side. Again, it's like a portal there. So bring your attention inward to your heart and let the wisdom speak. Thank you so much. I think that's a good place to end. So we'll wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining us. We so appreciate it. And I'm going to, I'll unmute you all. If you'd like to say goodbye, some of you may have to unmute yourself, but. Candace, thank you. you have a, a website? Is it just Candace? Yes. CandaceSanderson.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, you know, I've got a YouTube, so yeah. And I'll make sure and put the links on the, the following email so that you can, you can find Candace. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Kelly, thank you. Great Kelly. Another Bye. fantastic experience. Thank you for the session. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Candace. Bye.